Hey guys, what is up? I am so glad to be back with you guys on Love is a Choice. My name is Kyle Haney and I'm so glad to have you all here today. I've been on a little bit of a vacation, went to South Padre Island on Sunday, spent some time with family this last weekend and I got really sunburned. So if you see a little flakage happening on my ear, then um, that's what it is. It's not leprosy, I promise. But hey, even if it was, Jesus healed leprosy all the time. So not a big deal anyway. Well, let me get on track here. Today I'm going to be talking about something that is really near and dear to my heart. And uh, I really think that it's really near and dear to the heart of God also because um, it's mentioned in the Bible, um, but it's the topic of, it's the topic of soup. That's right. You heard me soup. Um, <laughs> okay. So I think that this is actually closer to your heart than you think it is. Uh, you may not know exactly what I'm talking about yet and that's fine. I am going to actually uh, explain it. Um, so the title of today's video is Borsch and Birthrights. But before we get into this topic, go ahead and click like and subscribe and also click the notification bell so that you can get notified and it's notification bell every single time I upload a video. Every single time there's a new video posted on Love is a Choice. Let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. All right, let's go. So in order for me to um, to explain what borscht and birthrights is, uh, we're going to have to go to Genesis 25. But before we do, I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory here. So there was a man named Isaac in the Bible, and he's actually one of the fathers of the faith, of uh, the Jewish faith and of the Christian faith. Um, but anyway, his name was Isaac, and he was a son of Abraham. And he had two sons named Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob and Esau were both twins. There was this thing called a birthright back in the day. And even in some cultures today, there's still a birthright. And it was a really big deal. And this birthright went to the first son, to the firstborn son. Now, because they were twins, it was a really close tie. And the midwife that was there actually had to tie a ribbon on the first child that came out of the mother's womb. So that first child was a man named Esau. And his brother Jacob was close behind. Now, Jacob was holding on to Esau's leg whenever the midwife delivered the baby because that baby wanted to come out also at the same time. I don't know if it's because they had some intrinsic knowledge of this birthright. I don't think so. But all I can tell you is that Jacob, the younger son, by like this much, he was always a trickster from that point on. He was a deceiver. If you think like Loki and Thor... That's kind of what I'm thinking this dynamic might have been like. He was more of a mama's boy than than Esau was. Esau was real rough and tumble. He was the one that was going out in the field and hunting. And uh, Jacob stayed home with his mom and was cooking and doing arts and crafts and painting walls in their little stucco hut, I guess. The father, Isaac, he favored Esau over Jacob anyway because he was more manly seeming. Uh, so yeah. So just go with me there. In Genesis 25, verse 29, it says, Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. He was exhausted, y'all. And Esau said to Jacob, oh, Let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. A little bit repetitive. And then Jacob said, Sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. This birthright was a huge deal, and any child, any firstborn son would have treasured this birthright. But not Esau. No, no, no. No, sir. No, ma'am. Esau wanted some soup. He wanted some stew. I guess his brother was a really good cook. I don't know. But I mean, he had to be like some really good cook for Esau to sell his birthright to him. Esau basically didn't understand or didn't care about his birthright. He didn't value it the way he should. Jacob saw what the birthright was. I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit about the birthright. The birthright meant that you were consecrated unto God as the priest of your home or the priest of your tribe. You're like the chief when it comes to religion and, and leading your family to God. It also means that you got a double portion of your father's inheritance. If you had like five siblings, they would get their fifth of the portion, but you would get two fifths of a portion. Maybe it would be 
two sixths. I don't know. They got double portion of that inheritance. They also had legal authority over their family. Whenever their father passed away, they would then be the head of the household. They would be the head of their clan because it wasn't like families now where, you know, you have one family unit, you know, and then maybe your mom's sister's family unit is living in some other city or in another neighborhood. Now these people stuck together. So all of the firstborn sons would lead together in their, in their clan. They had more responsibility also, but the birthright came with that responsibility. And it was, it was a real blessing. And speaking of blessings, they also, they had the father's blessing. Uh, every son did, but the, but the birthright son, the firstborn son would get a double blessing also. Esau didn't value it because he thought he was going to die. But I really just kind of think he was a little bit of a drama queen because he didn't die at that point. And I don't think that a bowl of soup would have really saved his life. So anyway, it got me thinking about about things that have happened in my past where I've given up parts of my calling at a time because I'm wanting to please my own flesh. I'm wanting to, you know, basically step into my way of doing things rather than God's way of doing things. I'm seeking momentary pleasure, uh, momentary satisfaction instead of what God has promised, which is eternal satisfaction and eternal fulfillment in heaven with him. And when we choose sin over choosing, you know, righteousness and choosing the ways of God, it's the same thing as if we are choosing to eat soup instead of choosing our birthright. So I have a funny story to tell you guys about an encounter I had with some soup whenever I first ventured off into the gay lifestyle. This one day I went to the store to get some groceries for my Mimi and um, she needed to get bread. She needed eggs. She needed some cheese. She needed some lactate milk uh, and also she needed some cans of soup. So I went to the store and I bought all these things and um, put them all in my car once I got them and I went and delivered them to her apartment. Well, one of the bags had ripped and I didn't realize it until I got back in the car. And at this time in my life, I was under a lot of I was under a lot of conviction because I grew up knowing the word. I grew up in a Christian house. I grew up um, knowing the ways of God. And I knew that I wasn't living according to God's word. I knew I wasn't living according to his standards and I wasn't right with him. That means I also knew the story of Esau and Jacob and the bowl of soup, the borscht, the borscht and the birthright. I knew that story. So I was driving home from my Mimi's apartment and all of a sudden I came to a stoplight and stopped my car and out from underneath my passenger seat comes rolling out this can of soup, this Campbell's, uh, oh, what was it? Bean with bacon soup, I think. Anyway, immediately I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, you're selling your birthright for a bowl of soup. And I was like, ah, you know what? It's, it's nothing. It's just my Christian guilt. Blah, blah, blah. Which, by the way, Christian guilt is kind of a misnomer because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's what it says in Romans 8, 1. Anyway, I'm driving down the road and uh, I come to the stoplight and the soup rolls out. And it's almost like taunting me. And I'm just looking at this can of soup. And I'm just kind of annoyed. Just annoyed, really. I'm like, ugh, whatever. So I don't, I didn't do anything about it. I just tried to, you know, Tried to just move on, move on in my thoughts. The next day when I got in my car and came to a stop sign, guess what was there to greet me? Soup. <laughs> this can of soup becomes rolling out again. And I'm just, I, I look at it again and I'm annoyed. And I hear God say again to me, he's telling me, Kyle, you're selling your birthright for a bowl of soup. And I'm just trying to think of other things, trying to, you know, not think about that. Um, turn on some music. Um, and you know, I was able to block it out until the next stoplight, uh, when out comes the soup again. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. This is just, it's, it's frustrating. This is stupid. And I didn't, I didn't do anything about the soup. You would think that if it was that annoying, I would have picked it up and just like, you know, put it somewhere where it's not going to roll out. Um, but I didn't because, you know, in my mind, I wanted to say, Oh, you know, it's not a big deal. But if I had acknowledged it, I would be admitting to myself 
that this is a big deal. It would have been admitting that I was hearing God convicting me. So anyway, I just let the soup roll on. So I'm, I'm under conviction already, but I'm not wanting to admit it. And I'm also not wanting to be constantly reminded about this stupid can of soup that's under my seat. And so I just pick it up and I put it in the cup holder. It's still in plain sight. I've still got to look at this stupid can of soup. Why didn't I just take it inside the house? I don't know. But all I know is that it served to convict me. And, you know, God uses things like that. It's funny. He uses the little things like that to speak to us. Sometimes we are wondering, you know, why can't I hear God? Why can't I hear him? But I think that a lot of times, really, we're just kind of, we're hearing him, but we're trying to silence his voice. The soup was taunting me. It was just, it was just talking to me saying, Kyle, here I am. Give your birthright to Campbell's soup company here. Take your, take the soup and give me the birthright. That was just kind of a really weird story, but it, God spoke to me through it. And I find it interesting. You know, there's, there's symbolism surrounding cars in dreams. A lot of times a car represents your life. So this soup was rolling around in my car, but it, what it really meant was that in my life, I was sacrificing my birthright for a bowl of soup in order to pursue fleshly pleasures and to pursue a lifestyle that I wanted to pursue, to do things my way instead of God's way. And um, I was constantly reminded about it, but that's what we're doing whenever we enter into sin knowingly, or whenever we, maybe we don't know that we're in sin, but then when we find out, and uh, we still keep on doing what we want to do. We're selling our birthright for a bowl of soup. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 through 16, it says this, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal, for you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. Guys, that's what's happening. And I, I just, I want you to know this. Before we know Jesus, we don't, we don't have a birthright. But when we meet Jesus and whenever we accept him as our Lord and Savior, he gives us a birthright. And what that is, it's different than what it was in the Old Testament, because this is more of a spiritual birthright. It means that we are, we're co-heirs with him. It means that we are adopted into the family of Christ. We've been given grace to conquer our sin, to be more than conquerors over our sin. It's empowerment. It's legal authority over the enemy in our lives, over uh, demonic strongholds and attacks that have held us back in life, that have kept us in our pit of sin. A birthright in Christ is the acceptance into heaven whenever we go there, whenever we die, when we move from this life to the next. It's the right to step through those pearly gates and not have to go through the gates of hell, but to go into the gates of heaven and to enter into there and to live with Jesus uh, forever. And it's, it's salvation. That's what our birthright is. But whenever we choose our sin over our birthright, when we choose that bowl of soup over our birthright, we're throwing all that away. And the blessings that come with a birthright of righteousness, the life here on earth that's fulfilled. It's a life here on earth that proclaims that I once was dead, but now I'm alive. We can't do that if we keep on choosing a bowl of soup or our sin. If we keep doing that, we don't have any birthright to those because we are basically rejecting the work that Jesus did on the cross. We're rejecting salvation, that free gift that Jesus gave us whenever he died for our sins. He was a perfect sacrifice. And he put himself on that cross for us and he took our sins onto himself. And then he died and he rose up again from the grave, victorious over death, which is what he brings us up out of. He brings us out of death when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. So guys, I urge you today, stop choosing soup over your birthright. Stop choosing your sin over what Jesus has for you, which is everlasting life, a life here on earth where we can bless others with our birthright. We can bless others by, by bringing them to Jesus, bringing them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And guys, I can tell you, having lived on the other side of the birthright, having lived uh, in the depths of my sin, there's nothing like this. This is more amazing. This is more fun. This is more fulfilling than anything I could have ever done in my own right. I'm nobody without Jesus, 
I, I don't have a family. I'm an orphan without Jesus, but he brings us in. He brings in the orphan. He's a father to the fatherless. And he gives a birthright to all of his children. If that's you, if you've given up your birthright over a bowl of soup, there's a way for you to get it back. It says in God's word that the gifts of God are without repentance. So that gift of salvation, your birthright is still available for you if you only repent, which means to turn around. It was a military term, which means to make a 180 turn. So when the commander said repent, the army would turn around and go the other way. So you repent of your sins and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart right now, if you feel something saying, oh, this guy is, he's silly, but then there's also something saying, no, 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 listen to him. And you feel that weightiness right now. Listen to that voice. Just like the voice of God, whenever he told me I'm selling my birthright for a bowl of soup when I was in my car, and I wanted to say, eh, mm, that's not God. That's just my Christian guilt. But it was the Holy Spirit. He's quiet, but his voice is strong. So if you feel a strong voice that's just kind of quiet and it's a nagging in your spirit that's saying what he's saying is right, then listen to that. This is how you give your life to Christ. This is how you reclaim your birthright. So if you would just pray these words after me, Father, I, I'm a sinner. I've chosen a bowl of soup over my birthright. I've chosen a life of sin over a life of knowing you and pleasing you, God. And Lord, I want to repent right now. I'm sorry for the things I've done. I'm sorry for my past, God. And I'm asking you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. I thank you for dying for my sins and raising up out of the grave again, victorious over hell, sin, and the grave. And Jesus, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Change me. Make me new. I want to be a new creation. I want to know true life. I want the birthright that you've offered me. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, if you just prayed that prayer, you are a new creation. The Bible says you're a new creation in Christ. If you've prayed that prayer, I, I want you guys to get plugged into a church somewhere near you, a good Bible-believing church that's going to lead you to truth that's going to lead you into discipleship. Find somebody at that church who will disciple you. Tell them where you've been. Because guys, I can tell you this, you're not going to get shamed. You're not going to be shamed for coming to Christ. The angels in heaven and all of the witnesses that have gone before us and died, all of your friends and family who were Christians when they passed away, they're up there cheering for you. There's a party going on in heaven. God is ecstatic. He is so happy to have you in his family. Jesus loves you so much, and he is not going to shame you. His heart is full of compassion for you. Just like I said earlier in Romans 8, 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Guys, you are not condemned. You're just not. As long as you come to Christ and you repent of your sins, and you make him the Lord and Savior of your life, he's not going to condemn you. He loves you so much guys i am so glad that you joined me today on love is a choice and uh just a reminder to like and subscribe and click that notification bell and if you prayed that prayer today to receive christ as your lord and savior put that in the comments and encourage other people to do the same because your testimony is powerful your testimony changes lives we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and guys it is my pleasure to, to do life with you guys. I know that I don't know y'all personally, but um, guys, I, I'm just excited to be a part of your life. If y'all need anything ever, just email me. Tell me your story, because I love y'all so much. Like and subscribe, notification bell, and uh, until next time, guys, sayonara.